CIET NCERT presents Contemporary India The audio textbook in geography for class 10 part 2 This book is read by Shiba Mal Chapter 4 This chapter has 16 pages This chapter is read by Shiba Mal Page 34 Chapter 4 agriculture friends india is an agriculturally important country two thirds of its population is engaged in agricultural activities agriculture is a primary activity which produces most of the food that we consume besides food grains it also produces raw material for various industries Can you name some industries based on agricultural raw material? Moreover, some agricultural products like tea, coffee, spices etc are also exported. Types of farming. Agriculture is an age-old economic activity in our country. Over these years, cultivation methods have changed significantly depending upon the characteristics of physical environment. technological know-how and socio-cultural practices farming varies from subsistence to commercial type at present in different parts of india the following farming systems are practiced primitive subsistence farming this type of farming is still practiced in few pockets of india Primitive subsistence agriculture is practiced on small patches of land with the help of primitive tools like hoe, dow and digging sticks and family or the community labor. This type of farming depends upon monsoon, natural fertility of the soil and suitability of other environmental conditions to the crops grown. It is a slash and burn agriculture. Farmers clear a patch of land and produce cereals and other food crops to sustain their family. When the soil fertility decreases, the farmers shift and clear a fresh patch of land for cultivation. This type of shifting allows nature to replenish the fertility of the soil through natural processes. Land productivity in this type of agriculture is low. as the farmer does not use his fertilizers or other modern inputs it is known by different names in different parts of the country can you name some such types of farmings it is jhuming in north eastern states like assam meghalaya mizoram and nagaland pamlo in manipur deepa in bastar district of chatisgarh and in andaman and nicobar islands jhuming the slash and burn agriculture is known as milpa in mexico and central america conico in venezuela roca in brazil masole in central africa ladang in indonesia rei in vietnam in india this primitive form of cultivation is called bivar or dhaiya in madhya pradesh podu and penda in andhra pradesh pamadabi or koman or bringa in odisha kumari in western ghats valre or valtre in southeastern rajasthan khil in himalayan belt kurwa in charkhand and jhuming in the northeastern region page 35 from the box rinja lived with her family in a small village at the outskirts of dipu in assam she enjoys watching her family members clearing slashing and burning a patch of land for cultivation she often helps them in irrigating the fields with water running through a bamboo canal from the nearby spring she loves the surroundings and wants to stay here as long as she can But this little girl she has no idea about the declining fertility of the soil and a family's search for fresh a patch of land in the next season 
Can you name the type of farming Rincha's family is engaged in? Can you enlist some crops which are grown in such farming? Figure 4.1 A picture showing a field where shifting agriculture is practiced. Intensive subsistence farming This type of farming is practiced in areas of high population pressure on land. It is labor-intensive farming where high doses of biochemical inputs and irrigation are used for obtaining higher production. Can you name some of the states of India where such farming is practiced? Though the right of inheritance leading to the division of land among successive generations has rendered land holding size uneconomical, the farmers continue to take maximum output from the limited land in the absence of alternative source of livelihood. Thus, there is enormous pressure on agricultural land. Commercial farming The main characteristic of this type of farming is the use of higher doses of modern inputs. Example, high yielding variety, that is, HYV seeds, chemical fertilizers, insecticides and pesticides in order to obtain higher productivity. The degree of commercialization of agriculture varies from one region to another. For example, Rice is a commercial crop in Haryana and Punjab, but in Odisha, it is a subsistence crop. Can you give some more examples of crops which may be commercial in one region and may provide subsistence in another region? Plantation is also a type of commercial farming. In this type of farming, a single crop is grown on a large area. The plantation has an interface of agriculture and industry. Plantations cover large tracts of land using capital intensive inputs with the help of migrant laborers. All the produce is used as raw material in respective industries. In India, tea, coffee, rubber, sugarcane, banana, etc. are important plantation crops. Tea in Assam and North Bengal, coffee in Karnataka are some of the important plantation crops grown in these states. Since the production is mainly for market, a well-developed network of transport and communication connecting the plantation areas, processing industries and markets plays an important role in the development of plantation. Figure 4.2 Given here is a picture showing banana plantation in southern part of India. Figure 4.3 shows bamboo plantation in northeast. Page 36 Cropping Pattern You have studied the physical diversities and plurality of cultures in India. These are also reflected in agricultural practices and cropping patterns in the country. Various types of food and fiber crops, vegetables and fruits, spices and condiments, etc. constitute some of the important crops grown in the country. India has three cropping seasons. Rabi, Kharif and Zayad. Rabi crops are sown in winter from October to December and harvested in summer from April to June. Some of the important rabi crops are wheat, barley, peas, gram and mustard. Though these crops are grown in large parts of India, states from north and northwestern parts such as Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh are important for the production of wheat and other rabi crops. Availability of precipitation during winter months due to the western temperate cyclones helps in the success of these crops. However, the success of the Green Revolution in Punjab, Haryana, western Uttar Pradesh and parts of Rajasthan has also been an important factor in the growth of the above-mentioned rabi crops. Kharif crops are grown 
with the onset of monsoon in different parts of the country and these are harvested in September to October. Important crops grown during this season are paddy, maize, jowar, bajra, tur that is arhar, moong, urad, cotton, jute, groundnut and soya bean. Some of the most important rice growing regions are Assam, West Bengal, coastal regions of Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Maharashtra particularly the Konkan coast along with Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Recently, paddy has also become an important crop of Punjab and Haryana. In states like Assam, West Bengal and Odisha, three crops of paddy are grown in a year. These are oats, aman and boro. In between the Rabi and the Kharif seasons, there is a short season during the summer months known as the Zayed season. Some of the crops produced during Zayed are watermelon, muskmelon, cucumber, vegetables and fodder crops. Sugarcane takes almost a year to grow. Major crops A variety of food and non-food crops are grown in different parts of the country depending upon the variations in soil, climate and cultivation practices. Major crops grown in India are rice, wheat, millets, pulses, tea, coffee, sugarcane, oil seeds, cotton and jute etc. Rice It is the staple food crop of a majority of the people in India. Our country is the second largest producer of rice in the world after China. It is a kharif crop which requires high temperature that is above 25 degree centigrade and high humidity with annual rainfall above 100 cm. In the areas of less rainfall it grows with the help of irrigation. Figure 4.4 There are two pictures given here. A. Showing rice cultivation. Picture B. Where rice is ready to be harvested in the field. Rice is grown in the plains of north and northeastern India, coastal areas and the deltaic regions. Development of dense network of canal irrigation and tube wells have made it possible to grow rice in areas of less rainfall such as Punjab, Haryana and western Uttar Pradesh and parts of Rajasthan. Page 37. Here given a map of India showing the major and minor rice producing areas. The major areas are shaded in dark green and the minor areas are shaded in light green some of the states shaded here are as follows regions of uttar pradesh bihar assam west bengal jharkhand eastern coastal regions of tamil nadu andhra pradesh odisha and western coast of kerala these are some of the major rice producing areas of our country page 38 wheat this is the second most important cereal crop it is the main food crop in north and northwestern part of the country this rabi crop requires a cool growing season and a bright sunshine at the time of ripening it requires 50 to 75 cm of annual rainfall evenly distributed over the growing season there are two important wheat growing zones in the country the ganga satluj plains in the northwest and the black soil region of the deccan the major wheat producing states are punjab haryana uttar pradesh bihar rajasthan and parts of madhya pradesh figure 4.5 a picture showing wheat cultivation millets jowar bajra and ragi are the important millets grown in india though 
These are known as coarse grains. They have very high nutritional value. For example, ragi is very rich in iron, calcium, other micronutrients and roughage. Jowar is the third most important food crop with respect to area and production. It is a rain-fed crop, mostly grown in the moist areas which hardly needs irrigation. Major jowar producing states were Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh in 2011-2012. Bajra grows well on sandy soils and shallow black soil. Major bajra producing states were Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Haryana in 2011-2012. Ragi is a crop of dry region and grows well on red, black, sandy, loamy and shallow black soils. Major ragi producing states are Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Jharkhand and Arunachal Pradesh. Figure 4.6 A picture showing Bajra cultivation. Maize It is a crop which is used both as food and fodder. It is a karif crop which requires temperature between 21 degrees centigrade to 27 degrees centigrade and grows well in old alluvial soil. In some states, like Bihar, maize is grown in Rabi season also. Use of modern inputs such as HYV seeds, fertilizers and irrigation have contributed to the increasing production of maize. Major maize producing states are Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Madhya Pradesh. Pulses India is the largest producer as well as the consumer of pulses in the world. These are the major sources of protein in a vegetarian diet. Major pulses that are grown in India are Tur that is Arhar, Urad, Moong, Masur, Peas and Gram. Can you distinguish which of these pulses are grown in the Kharif season and which are grown in the Rabi season? Pulses need less moisture and survive even in dry conditions. Being leguminous crops, all these crops except arhar help in restoring soil fertility by fixing nitrogen from the air. Therefore, these are mostly grown in rotation with other crops. Major pulse producing states in India are Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Page 39. Here given a map of India showing the major and minor wheat producing states. The major areas are shaded in dark pink and the minor areas are shaded in light pink color. Some of the major and minor wheat producing states are as follows. Parts of Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Northern Rajasthan, Regions of Uttarakhand, Regions of Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh are the major producing regions. Some of the minor producing regions are the Eastern Region of Uttar Pradesh, Northern Bihar, Regions of Rajasthan, some parts of Gujarat, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. Page 40 Food crops other than grains Sugarcane It is a tropical as well as a subtropical crop. It grows well in hot and humid climate with a temperature of 21 degrees centigrade to 27 degrees centigrade and an annual rainfall between 75 centimeter and 100 centimeter. Irrigation is required in the regions of low rainfall. It can be grown on a variety of soils and needs manual labor for sowing to harvesting. India is the second largest producer of sugarcane, only after Brazil. It is the main source of sugar, gur, that is jaggery, 
Kansari and molasses. The major sugarcane producing states are Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Bihar, Punjab and Haryana. Figure 4.8 A picture shows sugarcane cultivation. Oil seeds. In 2008, India was the second largest producer of groundnut in the world after China. In rapeseed production, India was third largest producer in the world after Canada and China in 2008. Different oil seeds are grown covering approximately 12% of the total cropped area of the country. Main oil seeds produced in India are groundnut, mustard, coconut, sesame, that is til, soya bean, castor seeds, cotton seeds, linseed and sunflower. Most of these are edible and used as cooking mediums. However, some of these are also used as raw material in the production of soap, cosmetics and ointments. Groundnut is a kharif crop and accounts for about half of the major oil seeds produced in the country. Gujarat was the largest producer of groundnut followed by Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu in 2011-2012. Linseed and mustard are rabi crops. Sesame is a kharif crop in north and rabi crop in south India. Castor seed is grown both as rabi and kharif crop. Figure 4.9 Picture showing groundnut, sunflower and mustard which are ready to be harvested in the field. Tea Tea cultivation is an example of plantation agriculture. It is also an important beverage crop introduced in India initially by the British. Today, most of the tea plantations are owned by Indians. The tea plant grows well in tropical and subtropical climates endowed with deep and fertile, well-drained soil, rich in humus and organic matter. Tea bushes require warm and moist frost-free climate all through the year. Frequent showers evenly distributed over the year ensures continuous growth of tender leaves. Tea is a labor-intensive industry. It requires abundant, cheap and skilled labor. Tea is processed within the tea garden to restore its freshness. Major tea producing states are Assam, Hills of Darjeeling and Jalpaiguri districts, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Apart from these, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Meghalaya, Andhra Pradesh and Tripura are also tea producing states in the country. In 2008, India was the third largest producer of tea after China and Turkey. Figure 4.10 Picture showing the tea cultivation and figure 4.11 It shows tea leaves are being harvested. Page 41 Coffee In 2008, India produced 3.2% of the world coffee production. Indian coffee is known in the world for its good quality. The Arabica variety initially brought from Yemen is produced in the country. This variety is in great demand all over the world. Initially, its cultivation was introduced on the Baba Budan hills and even today its cultivation is confined to the Nilgiri in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Horticulture Crops In 2008, India was the second largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world after China. India is a producer of tropical as well as temperate fruits. Mangoes of Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. Oranges of Nagpur and Cherapunji, which is in Meghalaya. Bananas of Kerala, Mizoram, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. Lychee and guava of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, pineapples of Meghalaya, grapes of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Maharashtra, apples, pears 
apricots and walnuts of Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh are in great demand the world over. Figure 4.12 shows apricots, apple and pomegranate orchards. India produces about 13% of the world's vegetable. It is an important producer of pea, cauliflower, onion, cabbage, tomato, brinjal and potato. And figure 4.13 shows the cultivation of vegetables. Peas, cauliflower, tomato and brinjal. Page 42 Non-food crops Rubber It is an equatorial crop. But under special conditions, it is also grown in tropical and subtropical areas. It requires moist and humid climate with rainfall of more than 200 cm and temperature above 25 degrees centigrade. Rubber is an important industrial raw material. It is mainly grown in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Garo Hills of Meghalaya. In 2010-2011, India ranked fourth among the world's natural rubber producers. Here given an activity. List the items which are made of rubber and are used by us. Figure 4.14 A pie diagram is given which shows the consumption of natural rubber in 2010 and 2011. The various categories shown here are Auto tyres and tubes are the major consumption areas with 62.2%. Cycle tyre and tubes 9.2%. Camelback 4.6%. Footwears which are made out of rubber holds only 6.6% where bells and hoses holds 4.6%. Latex form is 4%. Dipped goods 4.1% and other uses are 4.7% only. Source Statistics and Planning Department Rubber Board, Kottayam, Kerala. Fiber crops Cotton, jute, hemp and natural silk are the four major fiber crops grown in India. The first three are derived from the crops grown in the soil. The latter is obtained from cocoons of the silkworms fed on green leaves, especially mulberry. Rearing of silkworms for the production of silk fiber is known as sericulture. Cotton India is believed to be original home of cotton plant. Cotton is one of the main raw materials for cotton textile industry. In 2008, India was second largest producer of cotton after China. Cotton grows well in drier parts of black cotton soil of the Deccan Plateau. It requires high temperature, light rainfall or irrigation, 210 frost-free days and bright sunshine for its growth. It is a Kharif crop and requires 6 to 8 months to mature. Major cotton producing states are Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. Figure 4.15 A picture showing the cotton cultivation. Jute It is known as the golden fiber. Jute grows well on well-drained fertile soils in the flood plains where soil is renewed every year. High temperature is required during the time of growth. West Bengal, Bihar, Assam, Odisha and Meghalaya are the major jute-producing states. It is used in making gunny bags, mats, ropes, yarn, carpets and other artifacts. Due to its high cost, it is losing market to synthetic fibers and packing materials, particularly the nylon. Page 43 Technological and Institutional Reforms 
It was mentioned in the previous pages that agriculture has been practiced in India for thousands of years. Sustained uses of land without compatible techno-institutional changes have hindered the pace of agricultural development. In spite of development of sources of irrigation, most of the farmers in large parts of the country still depend upon monsoon and natural fertility in order to carry on their agriculture. For a growing population, this poses a serious challenge. Agriculture, which provides livelihood for more than 60% of its population, needs some serious technical and institutional reforms. Thus, collectivization, consolidation of holdings, cooperation and abolition of zamidari, etc. were given priority to bring about institutional reforms in the country after independence. Land reform was the main focus of our first five-year plan. The right of inheritance had already led to fragmentation of land holdings, necessitating consolidation of holdings. The law of land reforms were enacted, but the laws of implementation was lacking or lukewarm. The government of India embarked upon introducing agricultural reforms to improve Indian agriculture in the 1960s and 1970s. The Green Revolution, based on the use of package technology and the White Revolution, that is, Operation Flood, were some of the strategies initiated to improve the lot of Indian agriculture. But this too led to the concentration of development in few selected areas. Therefore, in the 1980s and 1990s, a comprehensive land development program was initiated, which included both institutional and technical reforms. Provision for crop insurance against drought, flood, cyclone, fire and disease, establishment of Grameen banks, cooperative societies and banks for providing loan facilities to the farmers at lower rates of interest were some important steps in this direction. Kisan Credit Card, that is KCC, Personal Accident Insurance Scheme, that is PAIS, are some other schemes introduced by the government of India for the benefit of the farmers. Moreover, special weather bulletins and agricultural programs for farmers were introduced on the radio and television. The government also announces minimum support price, remunerative and procurement prices for important crops to check the exploitation of farmers by speculators and middlemen. From the box, Bhudan, Gramdan. Mahatma Gandhi declared Vinoba Bhave as his spiritual heir. He also participated in Satyagraha as one of the foremost Satyagrahis. He was one of the votaries of Gandhi's concept of Gram Swarajya. After Gandhiji's martyrdom, Vinoba Bhave undertook Padyatra to spread Gandhiji's message covered almost the entire country. Once, when he was delivering a lecture at Pochampalli in Andhra Pradesh, some poor landless villagers demanded some land for their economic well-being. Vinoba Bhave could not promise it to them immediately, but assured them to talk to the government of India regarding provision of land for them if they undertook cooperative farming. Suddenly, Sri Ramchandra Reddy stood up and offered 80 acres of land to be distributed among 80 landless villagers. This act was known as Bhudan. Later, he travelled and introduced his idea widely all over India. Some zamidars, owners of many villages, offered to distribute some villages among the landless. It was known as Gramdan. However, many landowners chose to provide some part of their land to the poor farmers due to the fear of Land Sealing Act. This Bhudan, Gramdan movement initiated by Vinoba Bhave is also known as Bloodless Revolution. Page 44 
contribution of agriculture to the national economy, employment and output. Agriculture has been the backbone of Indian economy, though its share in the gross domestic product, that is, GDP, has registered a declining trend from 1951 onwards. In 2010-2011, about 50% of the total workforce was employed by the farm sector, which makes more than half of the Indian population dependent on agriculture for sustenance. The declining share of agriculture in the GDP is a matter of serious concern because any decline and stagnation in agriculture will lead to a decline in other spheres of the economy having wider implications for society. Considering the importance of agriculture in India, the government of India made concerted efforts to modernize agriculture. Establishment of Indian Council of Agricultural Research – which is well known as ICAR, agricultural universities, veterinary services and animal breeding centers, horticulture development, research and development in the field of meteorology and weather forecast, etc. were given priority for improving Indian agriculture. Apart from this, improving the rural infrastructure was also considered essential for the same. Table 4.1. It shows India's growth of GDP and major sectors in percentage. This table has five columns and five rows. The column shows the sector. The second column shows the year plan 2002-2007. The third year plan 2007-2012 and fourth and fifth shows the target one and target two. The first row talks about the sector agriculture and its growth in the different years is 1.7 in 2002-2007, 3.2 in 2007-2012, 4.0 in the first target area and 4.2 in target 2 respectively. The second sector mentioned here is industries where its contribution is 8.3 in 2002-2007, 7.4 in the year 2007-2012, 9.6 in target 1 and 10.9 in target 2. The service sector 2002-2007, it's 9.0. In the year plan 2007-2012, the figures mentioned are 10.0. The figures mentioned for target 1 is 10 and for target 2 is 10 respectively. GDP for 2002-2007 mentioned here as 7.2. For the year 2007-2012, it's 8.2 and for the first target, it's 9.0 and target 2, it is 9.5. Source, faster, sustainable and more inclusive. An approach to the 12th Five-Year Plan Planning Commission, Government of India, 2011. From the Table 4.1, it is clear that though the GDP growth is increasing over the years, it is not generating sufficient employment opportunities in the country. The growth rate in agriculture is decelerating, which is an alarming situation. Today, Indian farmers are facing a big challenge from international competition and our government is going ahead with reduction in the public investment in agriculture sector particularly in irrigation, power, rural roads, market and mechanization. Subsidy on fertilizers is decreased leading to increase in the cost of production. Moreover, reduction in import duties on agricultural products have proved detrimental to agriculture in the country. Farmers are withdrawing their investment from agriculture, causing a downfall in the employment in agriculture. 
activity. Find out why an Indian farmer does not want his son to become a farmer. From the box. When farmers have been facing so many problems and land under agriculture is decreasing, can we think of alternative employment opportunities in the agriculture sector? Why are farmers committing suicides in several states of the country? Food security. You know that food is a basic need and every citizen of the country should have access to food which provides minimum nutritional level. If any segment of our population does not have this access, that segment suffers from lack of food security. The number of people who do not have food security is disproportionately large in some regions of our country, particularly in economically less developed states with higher incidence of poverty. The remote areas of the country are more prone to natural disasters and uncertain food supply. In order to ensure availability of food to all sections of society, our government carefully designed a national food security system. It consists of two components. A. Buffer stock and B. Public distribution system, that is PDS. Page 45 As you know, PDS is a program which provides food grains and other essential commodities at subsidized prices in rural and urban areas. India's food security policy has a primary objective to ensure availability of food grains to the common people at an affordable price. It has enabled the poor to have access to food. The focus of the policy is on the growth in agriculture production and on fixing the support price for procurement of wheat and rice to maintain their stocks. The focus of the policy is on the growth in agriculture production and on fixing the support price for procurement of wheat and rice to maintain their stocks. Food Corporation of India, that is FCI, is responsible for procuring and stocking food grains, whereas distribution is ensured by public distribution system, that is PDS. The FCI procures food grains from the farmers, government announced minimum support price, MSP. The government used to provide subsidies on agriculture inputs such as fertilizers, power and water. These subsidies have now reached unsustainable levels and have also led to large-scale inefficiencies in the use of these scarce inputs. Excessive and imprudent use of fertilizers and water has led to water logging, salinity and depletion of essential micronutrients in the soil. The high MSP, subsidies in input and committed FCI purchases have distorted the cropping pattern. Wheat and paddy crops are being grown more for the MSP they get. Punjab and Haryana are foremost examples. This has also created a serious imbalance in intercrop parities. You already know that the consumers are divided into two categories. Below poverty line, that is BPL, and above poverty line, that is APL, with the issue price being different from each category. However, this categorization is not perfect and a number of deserving poor have been excluded from the BPL category. Moreover, some of the so-called APL slip back to BPL because of the failure of even one crop and it is administratively difficult to accommodate such shifts. Each district and block can be made self-sufficient in food grain production if government provides proper agricultural infrastructure, credit linkages and also encourages the use of latest techniques. Instead of concentrating only on rice or wheat, 
the food crop with a better growth potential in that particular area must be encouraged. Creation of necessary infrastructure like irrigation facilities, availability of electricity, etc. may also attract private investments in agriculture. The focus on increasing food grain production which should be on a sustainable basis and also free trade in grains will create massive employment and reduce poverty in rural areas there has been a gradual shift from cultivation of food crops to cultivation of fruits vegetables oil seeds and industrial crops this has led to the reduction in net sown area under cereals and pulses With the growing population of India, the declining food production puts a big question mark over the country's future food security. The competition for land between non-agricultural uses such as housing etc and agriculture has resulted in reduction in the net sown area. The productivity of land has started showing a declining trend. Fertilizers pesticides and insecticides which once showed dramatic results are now being held responsible for degrading the soil periodic scarcity of water has led to reduction in area under irrigation inefficient water management has led to water logging and salinity page 46 one important reason is land degradation Free power to a section of farmers has encouraged them to pump groundwater to grow water intensive crops in low rainfall areas that is rice in Punjab sugarcane in Maharashtra this unsustainable pumping has reduced water storage in aquifers consequently many wells and tube wells have run dry This has pushed the marginal and small farmers out of cultivation. The big farmers with deeper tube wells still have water, but many other face a water crisis. Inadequate storage and marketing facilities also act as a disincentive to the farmers. Thus, the farmers are badly affected by the uncertainties of production and market. They suffer from a double disadvantage as they pay high prices for inputs such as HYV seeds, fertilizers, etc., but lack the bargaining power to fix prices in their favor. All the production reaches the market simultaneously. The higher the supply, the lower is the demand. This causes distressed sale also. Therefore, there can be no food security without the security of the small farmers here given a collage of various news items which talks about some events occurring in the agricultural scenario of the country activity draw bar diagram showing the trend of food grain production in india during last 5 years find out the reason of this trend table 4.2 india food grains production in million tons here we are given a table having six columns and these columns shows the cereals the year of production that is 2006-2007 the second year of production is 2007-2008 The third production year is from 2008 to 2009. The fourth production year is from 2009 to 2010. And the last one says 2010 to 2011 provisional. The first cereal mentioned here is rice and the production in million tons is as follows. 93.4 96.7 97.5 89.10 95.3 million tons in the respective years mentioned wheat 75.8 78.6 million tons in the respective years mentioned coarse grains jowar and bajra 18.0 
and 16.5 million tons in the years mentioned. Pulses 14.2, and 18.1 million tons in the respective years mentioned. The total production of the cereals in the respective years are as follows. 201.4 and 215.8 million tons. Source Directorate of Economics and Statistics Department of Agriculture and Cooperation Economic Survey 2011-2012 Activity Organize a debate on food security of India, its need and efforts. Page 47 Impact of Globalization on Agriculture Globalization is not a new phenomenon. It was there at the time of colonization. In the 19th century, when European traders came to India, at that time too, Indian spices were exported to different countries of the world and farmers of South India were encouraged to grow these crops. Till today, it is one of the important items of export from India. During the British period, cotton belts of India attracted the British and ultimately cotton was exported to Britain as a raw material for their textile industries. Cotton textile industry in Manchester and Liverpool flourished due to the availability of good quality cotton from India. You have read about the Champaran movement which started in 1917 in Bihar. This was started because farmers of that region were forced to grow indigo on their land because it was necessary for the textile industries which were located in Britain. They were unable to grow food grains to sustain their families. Under globalization, particularly after 1990, the farmers in India have been exposed to new challenges. Despite being an important producer of rice, cotton, rubber, tea, coffee, jute and spices, our agricultural products are not able to compete with the developed countries because of the highly subsidized agriculture in those countries. Figure 4.17 shows a picture of tissue culture of tea clones. Today, Indian agriculture finds itself at the crossroads. To make agriculture successful and profitable, proper thrust should be given to the improvement of the condition of marginal and small farmers. The Green Revolution promised much, but today is under controversies. It has been alleged that it has caused land degradation due to overuse of chemicals, drying aquifers and vanishing biodiversity. The key word today is gene revolution, which includes genetic engineering. Can you name any gene-modified seed used vastly in India? Figure 4.18 Picture shows problems associated with heavy pesticide use are widely recognized in developed and developing countries. In fact, organic farming is much in vogue today because it is practiced without factory-made chemicals such as fertilizers and pesticides. Hence, it does not affect environment in a negative manner. A few economists think that Indian farmers have a bleak future if they continue growing food grains on the holdings that grow smaller and smaller as the population rises. India's rural population is about 600 million, which depends upon 250 million approximate hectares of agricultural land, an average of less than half a hectare per person. Indian farmers should diversify their cropping pattern from cereals to high-value crops. 
This will increase incomes and reduce environmental degradation simultaneously. Because fruits, medicinal herbs, flowers, vegetables, biodiesel crops like jatroba and jojoba need much less irrigation than rice or sugarcane. India's diverse climate can be harnessed to grow a wide range of high-value crops. From the box Genetic engineering is recognized as a powerful supplement in inventing new hybrid varieties of seeds. From the box Change in cropping pattern for example, from cereals to high-value crops, will mean that India will have to import food. During 1960s, this would have been seen as a disaster. But if India imports cereals while exporting high-value commodities, it will be following successful economies like Italy, Israel and Chile. These countries export farm products. These are fruits, olives, Speciality seeds and wine and import cereals. Are we ready to take this risk? Debate the issue. Page 48 Exercises Question 1 Multiple choice question Question 1 of 1 Which of the following describes a system of agriculture where a single crop is grown on a large area? The four choices given are A. Shifting agriculture B. Plantation agriculture C. Horticulture and 4. Intensive agriculture Question 2 of 1 Which one of the following is a rabi crop? The four choices given are A. Rice B. Gram C. Millets and D. Cotton Question 3 of 1 which one of the following is a leguminous crop? The choices given here are A. Pulses, B. Jawar, C. Millets and D. Sesamum. Question 4 of 1. Which of the following is announced by the government in support of a crop? The choices are A. Maximum support price B. Minimum support price C. Moderate support price or D. Influential support price Question 2 Answer the following questions in 30 words. Question 1 of 2 Name one important beverage crop and specify the geographical conditions required for its growth. Question 2 of 2 Name one staple crop of India and the regions where it is produced. Question 3 of 2. Enlist the various institutional reform programs introduced by the government in the interest of farmers. Question 4 of 2. The land under cultivation has got reduced day by day. Can you imagine its consequences? Question 3. Answer the following questions in about 120 words. 1 of 3. Suggest the initiative taken by the government to ensure the increase in agricultural production. Question 2 of 3. Describe the impact of globalization on Indian agriculture. Question 3 of 3. Describe the geographical conditions required for the growth of rice. Project Work Project 1 Group Discussion on the Necessity of Literacy Among Farmers Project 2 On an outline map of India, show wheat producing areas Page 49 Activity Here is a puzzle given having 16 rows and 14 columns each graticule is written an alphabet and the clues are given at the bottom. The clues given are First, the two staple food crops of India. Two, this is the summer cropping season of India. Three, pulses like arhar, moong, 
gram urad contain 4 it is a coarse grain 5 the two important beverages in india are 6 one of the four major fiber grown on black soil you were just listening to chapter 4 agriculture that contained 11 pages this chapter was read by shiba mal thank you